Hey guys, Dylan Cuesta here with FootageCrate.com. Today I'm going to show you how to get the most out of the motion graphics transitions that have been added to the website, which should look a little something like this. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is go to FootageCrate's transition section. They've got about a dozen different ones to pick from, so go ahead and pick your favorite. Once you got what you need, just pull up your suite and get editing. I'm going to be working in CS6, but if you have like Final Cut or Sony Vegas, it should work in a similar fashion. So once we've got our transition imported, in my case I have the paintbrush style right here, you're going to queue up the part in your timeline where you want to apply the transition. Now if you shot in HD like me, you're going to notice the effect is way too small for the picture. So we're going to highlight it in our timeline and go to Effects Controls. There's no magic number when it comes to rescaling your effects in the editor, but for something as simple as the transitions, it's not really that big of an issue. 225 seems to fit, so I'm just going to leave it there. As you can see, it looks a lot better. Though for me, I think the effect takes a little too long to complete itself. So I'll show you my little trick for using these effects. Basically, you're going to let the action run its course, and then right when it finishes filling up the screen, you're going to splice the footage. And that'll separate the action from the still white frame that finishes with each effect. But now that the part with motion is separated, we can actually adjust the speed and duration. I just play with the percentage until I find something that I think suits the action. So this works a lot better for me, but feel free to speed it up or slow it down as much as you need for your project. So now that my effect is pretty much where I want it to be, I'm going to go ahead and put a title that I made beforehand over top the white part. Just to smoothen everything out, I'm going to add a transition to the title itself as well. Usually for this kind of stuff, I go with a traditional fade, but just to keep with the paint motif, I might go with a wipe, or a gradient wipe to be more specific. Again though, this is just for my project, so feel free to do whatever you think you have to do for your project. Okay, so now that we adjusted our effect to where we want it to be at the beginning, and have finished the graphics we want to put on top of that, now we have to decide how to finish the effect. I'm going to put in the rest of my footage just so we can see what it looks like. If you want a quick solution, a fade will do the trick, but I think we can go a little bit farther. <laughs> That's a face. So a little trick I discovered actually involves making a duplicate of that separated action section that we made for ourselves earlier. So I'm going to select that part and do Command C for copy, and then Command V to drop the duplicate. I didn't used to use keyboard shortcuts, but I found that in the long haul, especially if you do as much work as I do, it makes stuff a lot faster. So, you know, in your own time, learn as much of that as you can. It's totally worth it. Anyway, now that we have a duplicate of that beginning part of our transition, we can actually right click and using the same interface we did to manipulate the duration of the effect, we can check off reverse speed. And it does exactly what it sounds like. It plays the effect that we have in reverse. So if we just tack that on the end of our little white piece we have, boom. It's a nice full circle finish, so it's a more fitting conclusion to the effect that we made. So that's how you can use the transition as it first appears in the download. But now we're going to cover something I think is a little bit cooler. Pretty sweet, right? If you want to know how to do it, here's how. First, you're going to need three things in your timeline. The footage you want to start with, the transition you picked, and the footage you want to cut to. So first, you're going to find the spot on the first clip where you want to start the effect. Then you're going to lay your transition on the second layer of video, and then the footage you want to cut to on the third. Make sure these two are lined up at the same spot. After we've got that all stacked, we're going to go into Effects and get Set Mat. Now apply that to the footage that you want to cut to. Then under Effects Controls, we're going to set our mat to Video 2 instead of 3. You'll also want to make sure that this second setting is set to Alpha Channel. After that, your project should look like this. Of course, if you want to keep your timeline nice and clean, what I recommend doing is taking out the bits you don't need anymore. So in the case of the second layer where you have the transition, you can find the spot where the action stops, similar to that last effect that we covered, and then trim it down to that point. And then if you have any extra footage in that first layer of video, go ahead and trim that down as well. And then for that third layer, we're going to splice where everything else stops, and then drag the remaining footage down to the first layer. By getting rid of the footage you don't need, you'll still be able to take advantage of the two layers of video if you have other effects planned for this footage. 
So those are some easy steps to get the most out of these transitions that Footage Crate has, but the fun doesn't really stop there. I mean, you can flip it vertically, horizontally, play with the color so it fits with a particular theme you're going for, mess with the transparency or opacity, even add some blur effects. Without sounding too hokey, it's really a matter of your own imagination as far as how far you can push these effects, and that goes for anything that's on Footage Crate. You have all these basic elements to work with, and by playing with all the settings and combining different elements, you can make something really cool. So if you come up with anything interesting, feel free to leave a comment down below or make your own tutorial. Well, that about covers it. So uh, until next time, uh, keep on filming. I guess I should figure out a consistent way to end these things. I mean, I know Chris does like a little dance, but that's, that's his shtick. I'll let him do that. Um, peace.